Hello, everyone. This is David Leibowitz with Philosophy of Game Philosophy and Persona 5's uh, Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There won the Persona 5 opening poll. And I'm a lover of Jungian psychology. I actually did want to wear a Jung t shirt, but it, the Jung itself is a little too yellow. So I'm going to wear and be dressed up for Happy Labor Day, everyone, for us in America. Of course, it's very much Japanese minded. So let's get going. Wake up, get up, get out there. So basically, the first little stanza is talking about who am I? Am I not unique? Now, this idea is I don't know how well it picks up on this mic. I'm in my room, with my untreated room. I just want to like a light, nicer background here. This about my um, voiceover studio. So basically, this idea is this is talking about the Japanese self in general, the persona, which applies to all. Like personas in this series are talking about well. Oh, it's the person that uh, it's inside you that gives you all these magic powers, and he's your spirit guide, basically. Um, Jung did have a spirit guide. That's Philemon, which you see in Persona One and Two. Uh, he wouldn't was did not refer to Philemon as his persona. He referred to him more as like a daemon, um, which is what also Socrates um, talked about his divine guide, um, which was uh, no Philemon was not Socrates' divine guide. Um, Philemon. Look at Tony for You's video on Philemon if you want to know what Philemon is, but that's tangent. Either way, what we're dealing with here is the persona that is basically the collective beliefs of society that impose and create your individuality, your fake individuality, which feeds into Foucault's ideas of uh, Foucault basically talked about also having a fake individuality that you're that you basically consent into society and their values. And, I mean, he talked about this very much with ideas of homosexuality being um, permitted in certain sexual practices and even things like defecation and things being off scene. Like, everything needs to be clean. Um, he talked about this in re relation to the Panopticon in um, B Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon. Jeremy Bentham, the founder of consequentialism slash so utilitarianism, where basically there's a towers in this hexagonal or octagonal prison where everyone is ultimately seen. And they are basically watched by God. Um, sorry about that, guys. I, I had a distraction. But basically, everyone is in this prison, and they are being watched by the eyes of God. Sort of like Yael de Beof at the end. Um, and being told exactly what to do and how to think. Yeah, so there's definitely some Foucault in here. But also, the idea of, am I not unique, in opposed to the collectivism like being unique because in the ideas of the collective society you have to follow their rules you have to you have to be appealing your own ideas don't matter in this in the Japanese collectivist confucian way uh, it's all about filial piety as lady virgilia would definitely love to talk um, talks about all the time as she's talked about in her persona analyses but basically what, what we see here is that these that wake up get up get out there when we get to here is sort of everyone wake up that's this is the sort of boot sort of buddhist idea wake up it's in general but be be enlightened find the hidden truth that you're sort of utilize your hindu third eye to find the truth behind the curtain that all these fakers so the people that basically cheated their way into society and pretended to be nice and fit the societal standards standards sort of like Everyone, like Shido, I mean, especially Madarani, they all look nice on the surface, except uh, Kaneshiro. Kaneshiro is just, he's just bad. <laughs> but basically, all of them cheat their way, but they're a faker and they're lies. And there's also the ideas of, the ideas that people are basically feeling like they can't do anything. 
because in our current society, without religion, without meaning, when science has gone in, we don't have the ideas and the abilities to have political reform. And in Japan, especially, when political protests and p- reporting on political disturbances, like bad things in the media, like we see with Oya, is basically being stamped down on, soon protests stamped down on. So it's very, Persona 5 is very important. Even if, I, it's still the most resonant to me, but it basically doesn't deal as much with Jung itself, even though it has the most, most va- vagrant or like blatant Jungian imagery. Wake up, get up, get up there. Why does nobody want change? Like, this is basically saying, people is saying, like, why? Like, this we're a collectivist society. We want the best for everyone. But in the collectivist society, everyone just wants nothing to change. They want, she got to Ganai. It can't be helped. Nothing can change. The Japanese market, basically, I mean, the Japanese market's bad. The economy's bad, and we can't really change it. And people in, are being overworked, and there's no way that can be helped. She got a canai, can't be helped. Just imagine, it's sort of like this is, it's sort of giving a, I think in a therapeutic term, imagine your best life, basically. Imagine that you are doing what you could in your best situation. This is sort of therapeutic. And is saying, okay, what imagine if you're out? Imagine you were doing all these great things. Imagine that you were actually making a change and actualize yourself and be an individual but and stand with the collective to change society. This is, this is perfect. I mean, it is a therapeutic exercise, I believe. The best self idea. Imagine your best self. I usually stick through um, the instrumental. There is, it's not much here. I think I'm just going to quit. I'm going to go skip through this because it basically, I mean, there's, there's a sort of, they, there's, there's a controversy that people think that the R words mentioned in this, but that's not true. It's, it's the target. I can see it. Um, actually, you know what? Let's continue. Let's, let's see if there's anything here. The, the, the lyrics are not put down, but we'll put it here. Are you ready? Are you ready to pick up the pieces? We're gonna break you down, them hearts. We're gonna change your heart, basically. So, basically, these lyrics are getting at, not, it's just the idea that, okay, oh, look at these people, they're so much better than us in society, when, if we're the collective, shouldn't there, shouldn't there not be rank? I mean, yes, there should be rank, and it's Japanese side, there's definitely rank, there's master, servant, all that, but 
Like, why should someone think secretly think when they're supposed to be a, a servant to society that that they think they're better than us when they're not? I mean, yes, we do need to with our masters look to our fathers, and that's where all this abuse comes from. But why should we when we should all just help each other out? Something, something to think about. Wake up, get up, get up there. All right. Again, take the mask off. The mask is the persona. The persona is what is holding you back. It's the persona is really actually your jailer. It's your mask. Um, of course, of course, they take off their masks. They free themselves. They show their true selves, not just what they want to be. Society. I feel like the biggest thing to this is definitely Makoto, where she basically wants to, is comes off as a good girl at first um, to to be like a teacher's pet, basically, and then says, "No, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fight for myself." And this this definitely shows that. We were talking about Persona 3 is the most collectivist. This is definitely Persona 3 to Persona 4 is like the middle of the individuals for collectivists because it's about what you can do but how you relate to others. This is just about yourself and how you – I mean it's still a friendship but that it's about your own struggle and what you do. It's what I want. And so take off the mask. Be yourself. I'm talking about maybe what the mask actually means a little more when we talk about beneath the mask and Joker's own plight. But yeah, it's very important. And also, yeah, just get out there that – does no one want change? Why does nobody want change? Why does no one change when it's a collective? No, because it's very stagnant. You don't because no one wants to. If you try to criticize, if you try to be out there in a Japanese society, you get called out. You can't be different. You have to fit a certain mold. <laughs> so it's very much. You can't want change, even if you want to help everyone. Because who are you helping? Who is your nexus of relations with people? Because you have these hikikomori who are saying they're bettering society. People that shut themselves in the room, like Futaba. They're helping society. They're, she, Futaba thinks she's helping society because her, she thinks her mom died because of her. But are you really helping society? No, you're not helping anyone. You're just helping society but not existing. Am I not unique? Am I not even here at all? Like, what does it mean to even be here? To have an ego when there is no ego? When there's sort of the dark version of the Buddhist no self. There is no self. You have nothing to do. There is no desire, no attachment. Which goes a little bit into the stuff with Strikers at the end of that. Um, not to go, not to be spoilery. This encounter, that thing at the end, this encounter strike, maybe a little bit of life won't change. That is the best performances out of, out of Lynn. Like, no, Counter Strike is fabulous against my favorite. Basically, basically, from a Persona Five associated game, it's my favorite song. Stab the sword, stab unjust from Stab and Star. Um, was it Star Wars and Mises? It's technically associated with Persona Five Royal, so that's technically even better than that. But this is still Counter Strike is still fabulous. Um, this, uh, that, hey, that just, that went up so high. It's just, that is a feat of singing. That is 100% a feat of singing. And just how good the harmony goes back and forth. It's just, again, not an expert on this. I, I am a singer, but, but the most important thing, the, I have a little dark interpretation of the debris line. <laughs> Might be the debris of Hiroshima, <laughs> Nagasaki. Don't want to be triggering, but. Japan is very much scarred about what Japan basically changed when the bomb went off. It 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 entered it accepted the it already accepted the West but accepted the West completely, and the debris, and the fire. I thought the anger like pull your feet out of the fire. No, it's your anger like fire, so that's fine. But though th that's the fire of life. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. But the debris, the debris of of how you can change. And how you can get out of sort of this mindset, this defeatist mindset, the debris of, you one could also say the lost generation, basically, where they lost all their economy. 
for the degree of when they lost their emperor, they lost their god for good. And how how do you how do how does we go forward? That's again why we're just sort of defeating this Gnostic demiurge at the end, um, this Yadavea figure, because because how do we move forward? Because that's that that control mindset, that mindset that's holding us back is not going to allow it change in Japanese society for many things. But how can it fully allow us to change when we are not being able to do anything? <laughs> the debris that the Japan's basically hold back by its past, by its trauma that it does not want to really acknowledge. Maybe a little bit into what Sh Shrekers talks about. But then there's also the, the cage, which is the cage at the end, which is obviously in the now the final dungeon is a jail, which is then every basically every dungeon in Shrekers is a jail, but it's technologically created in that one. But um, this one is a jail, I mean, a jail because you break out. It's a mindset that's holding you back in this sort of traumatic. It's basically this traumatic ide ideology, and once you break, once you, I mean, in therapy, you, when you break free of a of a of a de delirious mindset, you know, when these people who are sick at heart, uh, and you have to sort of deal with their desires. I still need to understand exactly what the distorted desires and their palace is exactly what that's getting at. I think it's a complex, but I, I when I get to that, I will definitely talk about it. But yeah, I think that's enough to talk about here. This was great. This was great to talk about. I mean, I love Persona 5. It changed my life. I'll just say watching the anime. I didn't have, I've not been royal yet myself. I know everything that in royal, basically. But I want to play it myself. But either way, this was great. Happy Labor Day, everyone. Um, a note on the last video. Um, Persona is likely not going to be under the boycott. Neither is Guilty Gear. Um, but I will give you more details. I do want to talk more about indies, though. Um, things like Gunvolt and uh, Shrey and Kina. So, look forward to that. But without further ado, this has been David Lee's Flash Movie Game Philosophy. Steal your heart. Peace.